Hi, my name is Don Latarski, and thank you for joining me on the first of the series of guitar theory video lessons. I decided to put some lessons together like this, mainly because I've got a new book out called Guitar Theory Illustrated, and I want to teach some of the lessons out of that, share some of these lessons that I've learned over the years. The um, first thing you should know about this series is that I don't use any notation, so I don't want to scare anybody off who hasn't uh, had any kind of formal training with notation. The guitar being a very pattern-oriented instrument allows us to learn things through shapes, and that's how this whole course is designed, is through using shapes. And I'll define all the shapes and give you all the terms as we go along um, so that you'll understand what I'm talking about, obviously. Each lesson is going to be structured um, a little bit of a lecture. I'm going to be using some uh, graphic help here with my fingerboard, as you'll see, as we go through. Sometimes I'll write some things up here on the board, and um, oftentimes I'll be demonstrating things right here on the fingerboard. Uh, toward the end of each lesson, you'll have a particular skill uh, that you'll be left with and that's sort of your homework. And uh, hopefully you'll work on that particular skill and get that down so that when you come back to the next video lesson, you've actually got something to bring back to the table. Now, why do we need to study music theory? A lot of guitarists play really well and perhaps they, they know very little about music theory. I found that the study of theory has really helped open up the fingerboard to me it's allowed me to communicate better with other professional musicians. Um, it's allowed me to organize things on the fingerboard. It's given me a high level of comfort in every location. So I'm going to present you a very systematic way of organizing things on the fingerboard based on five different octave shapes. And those octave shapes are based on what's called C chord, C major chord, a major chord, G major chord, E major, and D major. That's, you've probably heard of this before, but it's called the caged system, C-A-G-E-D. Okay, so let's start looking at this caged system. It's a really great way of organizing things on the fingerboard. It's pretty easy to understand. Uh, the first chord, C chord. <laughs> This is the way most people play it. Let's put that up on the board real quick. The, um, the dots that I'm going to be using actually do mean something. The black dot, the solid black dot, always represents what's called the root note of a chord. The root note is the note by which the chord is named. So this is actually the position of a C note on the guitar. So that's C. The third represents the third scale degree from the key of C. The fifth represents the fifth scale degree from the key of C. And then we're going to put another black dot here, which represents another iteration of the C note. And so we would say, we're describing this chord, we would say that we're doubling the C note. Don't worry about these numbers right now. I'm going to explain those in much greater detail in a short amount of time. But what I want you to understand is this, and this is the critical thing so far about this is that this shape right here, from here to here, is what's called an octave. Now an octave, in terms of physics, is the doubling of the vibration of the sound. Now if we take and build the next chord in this, in this sequence, the A chord, uh, most of you know how to play an A chord, I'll bet, already. Starts with an A note right there. Then we actually need to add in an E note and that happens to be the fifth of the chord. And then we're gonna add another root. So there's our octave shape in what's called the A form. Most people play it with this note here as well. And then also a doubling of the fifth. So let's put that up there anyway. So that means there's, a, there's an octave there. There's two fifths in the chord. The important thing there is that the octave is on five over to three. Again, a movable shape. See? So we've got two movable shapes so far. C, A, let's go to G. And G starts out, obviously, with G. And then we have this note in the chord. There's different ways of playing G chord, of course. 
uh, let's put that over here. I like G played like that. And we'll put the octave there. And there's yet one more octave in there. So we've got a lot of different things going on with this chord shape. And we have also a fifth right here. So we've got two of these in the chord. Two fifths and three of the G notes. I like to play my G chords like that. Again, just, just picture the octave shapes there, the octave right there on string one, clear over to string three, then to string six, and that's also a movable shape. See that? C, A, G, E is by far the most common chord on the guitar, chord shape that we work out of. The E shape is really important, and that's going to have it's going to look like this. Most people play their E chords like this. And let's put one more note in there. There it is. Okay, there we go. So let's see if I've done that right. Looks good. Okay. Standard E chord, right? Octave shape six, four, and one. And if we move that up the fingerboard, that becomes what we typically think of as a normal bar chord. One last shape, C, E, C, A, G, E, D. So we're on the D form, so let's make a little D chord down here. Shuffle these around a little bit. I didn't do that right, so let's fix that. Our octave shape is between string two and four. There's the chord. And again, it's a movable shape. That's cool. If we wanted to do all the E notes on the guitar, we would start with probably down here, using the E form. Whatever note is closest to the body of the guitar, put your first finger there, and now the octave goes to string two. This is the octave shape that's found in the D form. So the C form has to come next. So I'm gonna put my first finger here, where my fourth is, and now I'm in the C form. See, that's the C form octave shape. The next form is gonna be A. I'll put my first finger here. That's the A form. Again, I'm still playing only E notes. Put my first finger up here. And this is the G form. And then I come full circle back to the E form right here. Well, that's it for this week's lesson. Hope you stop back by soon and we'll check out some more music theory on the guitar.